Hello everyone. Thanks for watching today. We're back in the office and uh, we're going to do another uh, devotional from the YouVersion Bible app or Bible.com. Uh, like I said, I just continue to encourage you to check that out if you've not. Uh, there's so much good material there that uh, you can dig into. And so we're going to dig into one today. It's uh, uh, continuing in the Unshakable Hope uh, devotional from Max Licato. Uh, with the subtitle, Building Our Lives on the Promises of God. And that's that's what we all need to do. That's how uh, we find strength, how we find, uh, uh, you know, just a, a firm foundation in Jesus that uh, uh, helps us in difficult times like we have. And uh, I, I've told you before, I, I uh, love the fact that uh, they have a lighthouse on the cover of this book and, and devotional that... Uh, uh, just just speaks to to the way God is our strength in the midst of a of a struggle in the midst of a storm uh, or whatever He is our unshakable hope and we can rely rely on Him. Well, today's uh, devotional is called "There's Now There Is No Condemnation in Christ." Lucas says the Bible tells us that our debt of sin has a serious consequence. Uh, Isaiah fifty nine two says, "Your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden His face from you." so that he will not hear. Uh, that's, that's, the, that's the bad news. Sin separates us from God. It, it tears us apart from him. And uh, so he will not hear. He, he, he does not hear us uh, the, the same way he does. We don't know exactly how that works, but, but for sure not in the same way he does when we are close to him. Uh, okay, it says our sins have separated us from God. We are separated from him because of our sins. The realization of this moral debt, Lucado says, uh, sends some people into a frenzy of good works. Life becomes an unending quest to do enough, be better, accomplish more, a pursuit of piety, attend church, tend to the sick, go on pilgrimages, yet deep within is this gnawing fear. What if, having done all that, I've not done enough? Uh, that's the problem with trying to do works. What is enough? Uh, you know, we can compare ourselves to others and uh, that that's not you know we we can never do enough is the reality we can never do enough to to satisfy uh, you know the uh, the wages for our sin. Lucado goes on. He says other people respond to the list not with activity but with unbelief. They throw up their hands and walk away exasperated. No God would demand so much. They can exclaim. He can't be pleased. He can't be satisfied. He must not exist. If he does exist, he's not worth knowing. Uh, that's just as sad as, as trying to work it out on our own, trying to do our own, uh, work our way to heaven is, is the idea of, well, I can't work my way to heaven, so I'm just not going to do anything and just walk away. And uh, what a sad place that is to, to be as well. Uh, so what do we do? You know, uh, <laughs> the condemnation is, is there. It's real. Uh, because there's no one left to address these responses more than the Apostle Paul. He wrote, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 1. No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. How could he say this? Had he not seen the debt that people owe, the weight of their sins? Well, he had certainly seen his own. At one time, he had been determined to extinguish anything and everyone Christian. Again, we, we talked about that before when we were looking through uh, book of Acts of how how uh, Paul's life was radically changed, went from uh, going just a, as hard as he could against Jesus, against the things of God, uh, even though he thought he was doing what God wanted him to do. The reality was he was he was going against God's plan, God's idea, and it had this radical change on the the road to Damascus, and, and his life was completely different, and and just just went completely the other. The other way to where he saw, he experienced this, this idea of there's now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. He knew what it was to be saved, to be brought out of that darkness, out of uh, uh, that life that, that was hopeless, that was going nowhere. Well, Lucado says, but then Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus, knocked him off his high horse. <laughs> we aren't told when Paul realized the meaning of grace, but we know that he embraced this improbable offer that God would make him uh, right through Jesus Christ. This offer that comes through Jesus. Paul's logic followed a simple outline. Our debt is enough to sink us, uh, but God loves us too much to leave us there. So three, God found a way to save us. I, I like those three things, that three steps. Our debt is enough to sink us. We need to realize that. Our sin 
Uh, the wages of sin is is death. Uh, what we deserve from our sin is death. But uh, you know, and and it's enough to sink us. Our debt is too big. We could never repay it. We could never pay. Uh, we can never work our way. Never do enough good to get out of what we deserve for our sins. Uh, but number two, God loves us too much to leave us there. Uh, you know, he he's going to do what he can. He loves us. He cares. Every he knows everything about us and loves us still. And because of that, he doesn't want to leave us there. He, he didn't leave us there, uh, you know, in that place of condemnation. And so three, God found a way to save us. What a beautiful picture that is. God uh, sent Jesus. Uh, as Ocasio says, none of us can meet God's standard. All have failed. There is no one righteous, not even one, Romans 3.10. Uh, but where we fail, Jesus succeeded. Jesus uh, there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Paul said, Christ never sinned, 2 Corinthians 5.21. Uh, when it comes to the standard, he is the standard. He lived the perfect life. He, he was without sin, uh, but he became sin for us. He took on our sins. He died in our place. Uh, as Lucas says, God could not compromise his standard. His standard is perfection, uh, perfection of heaven. He had to satisfy every demand of justice for us he couldn't he couldn't uh, just let it go or look the other way or whatever he is too perfect for that he could not compromise his standard yet he also knew that we are made of flesh and that we can never achieve perfection so he placed our our sin on his perfect son and jesus felt the wrath of a just and holy god christ's death brought new life to us as a result we can approach him without condemnation in jesus uh, there is no condemnation uh, because of what Jesus has done for us. Like says, when you sin, Jesus stands before the tribunal of heaven and points to the blood streaked cross. I, I love the visual of that. Uh, so, so comforting for us. I've already made provision, he says. I've paid the debt. I've taken away the sins of the world. He does not bargain with you, telling you to clean up your life so he, you, so he can help no, he washes your sins away without any of your help. Uh, in other words, it's all about grace. It's all about God's grace. We don't deserve it, and yet God gives it to us. When we turn to him, when we turn our life to him, open our heart to him, he is quick to forgive, and, and then there's no condemnation. Um, we can't earn it on our own. Uh, we, can't, we, don't, we don't clean ourselves up a little bit or get us into a position. We can't clean ourselves up enough. So, so we, we, you know, uh, we don't have to clean up our life first. We come to him as we are, and then he works in us. He brings about the cleaning. Jesus does the work of transformation in our hearts and in our lives. He washes our sins away uh, without any of our help. We don't We don't really, all, all we have to do is open our heart to him, and he does the rest. Uh, Lucas says, just consider the gift God has given you. You've won the greatest lottery in the history of humanity, and you didn't even have to pay for the ticket. Your soul is secure, your salvation guaranteed. This is the message of God. This is the promise of grace. He does the work for us. He does the work in us. We open our heart to him. He'll never walk away from us. Uh, he'll always love us, always care for us. Um, it's a beautiful thing. I, I was thinking about a couple of verses that came to mind, and, and one is, is, is we kind of mentioned before, Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I, I just encourage you, take some time, even right now, and and think about that verse, what it means to you, and, and the difference. The wages of sin is death. In our former life, in our in our uh, in our sin, we are we are lost. We are deserving of death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Just spend some time with that verse uh, again. It's it's Romans six twenty three. Uh, pretty pretty common verse. You probably know it, but but think about what that means. The wages of sin is death. That's what we deserve. But the gift of God, His grace, the gift of His grace is eternal life. The the other verse I was thinking about is is First John one nine. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That's the promise. That if if we confess our sins, if we come to Him, if we open our heart to Him, He will forgive us. He will purify us from all unrighteousness. We will find that cleansing, that 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 we need, that the, the wages of sin will will be no more, that death will be no more for us. 
uh, we will have uh, the promise of, of eternal life. That's the gift of God. Well, uh, go to, to Max Licato's, uh respond uh, section here, and, and he has uh, some questions for us uh, to think about as well. He says, why is grace difficult to accept? Why is it difficult? Why do we? Why do we? Um, why do we want to? Th why do we think we need to do works to to uh, receive God's grace? Uh, that's not what it's about. Those things are in response to what God's done for us, out of love, not about salvation. They're about our response to to the Lord and what He's done for us. But why is grace difficult to accept? Part of it is why I think we we love to control things. We think we have to do things to control. Anyway, he says, what do, what do you learn from Paul's life about the impact of accepting God's grace? Again, what do you see in Paul's life? Again, he went from just as, as bad off as you could be, as much in sin as anyone uh, could be, to, to being just the, the, a wonderful Christian and did amazing things for God. Uh, so what do you learn from Paul's life about the impact of accepting God's grace? The second one here is, how is God's justice a symbol of the depth of his love for you? Uh, God loves you, and, and yet, you know, he is a just God. Uh, how has his justice given you an awareness of your need for his grace? He's a just God, and we, we need to ask for forgiveness. We can't just kind of slough our way through. It, it, we, have to, we have to accept him into our heart, into our life. He's a just God. Uh, he wouldn't be just if he just let everyone into heaven. And third, how have you experienced the fear of not measuring up to God's standard? Have you let that get you down before? You know, how, you know, have you, how have you experienced the fear of not measuring up to God's standard? How has freedom from this fear allowed you to share the hope of salvation with someone else? When you realize what God has done for you, how he has uh, provided you uh, with the blood of his son Jesus, his dying for your sins, uh, to make up the difference so, so that there is now no condemnation for you in Christ Jesus. Uh, that's, that's the gospel. That's the good news. That's, that's about grace. Well, as we wrap up today, let's, uh, let's pray together. Lord, we, we thank you for this awesome gift, uh, this reality that there can be now no condemnation for us in Christ Jesus. Our sin is deserving of death, but because of Jesus, we, we have grace, we have forgiveness, we have life, we have eternal life, we have that promise, we can have an unshakable hope that uh, is strong. It's, we can build our lives on this hope and realize that uh, the salvation we have is so beautiful, so wonderful, Lord, so amazing. We just give you praise, we give you glory today. Uh, thank you. Continue to be with us in these difficult days, Lord. Uh, draw us together in unity with uh, various racial issues, Lord. Help us to uh, uh, take steps to, to uh, reach out with compassion and love and, and be people of love, not of anger. Uh, Lord, plant that deep in us. We, we need you. We need revival to break out across our land. And we, we know you are the answer to that. You're the one that can bring healing and hope. Uh, so, Lord, we just, we just ask that you would do that. Uh, we also lift up the coronavirus as it, it's continuing to hear reports or it's uh, uh, spreading. Lord, we, we pray that uh, you'll be with, with all those involved with that, those that are dealing with it, those that have it, uh, doctors, nurses, uh, all those that are uh, uh, helping to treat those with it. Lord, we just, just commit these days to you, these difficult days. We thank you that you are still in control, you're still in charge, and we just just ask that you will continue to lead and guide and direct us. Help us each and every day. Send your, your spirit. Give us peace, Lord. Uh, thank you for what you're doing, what you're going to do. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching today. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow uh, with another uh, hymn devotional. So uh, have a great rest of your day. And we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.